Alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Juma Mubarak. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillahi nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'ufirhu wa na'udhu billahi min shururi anfusina wa min sayyati amalina man yadihi allahu falamudilla lahu man yudlilhu falahadiya lah wa ashadu an la ilaha illa Allah wahduhu la sharika lahu wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluhu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam All praise is due to Allah from whom we seek help and forgiveness we seek refuge with Allah from the evil of our own souls and of our own bad deeds. Whomsoever Allah guides will never be led astray and whomsoever Allah leaves astray, no one can guide. I bear witness that there is no God but Allah, the one who has no partner. And I bear witness that Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, is Allah's servant and messenger. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu attaqullah haqqa tuqatihi wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimoon. O ye who believe, be mindful of Allah. Be mindful of Allah in the way that Allah deserves and do not die except in a state of full submission to Allah. Subhanakallah ilma lana illa ma alamtana inna ka anta al alim al hakim rabbish rahli sadri wa yasili amri wahlu al ukta tan mil lisani yafkahu koli bismillah rahman rahim again salamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatahu uh, welcome back to uh to juma inshallah we are uh so blessed to be able to be in this time of the month in the last 10 days uh, of ramadan uh and it, it, it's truly a special time, inshallah. There's, uh, as, as we know, as we've probably seen, uh, not all the people who are in our lives, the people who are close to us, uh, the people we love the most, not all of them made it this far to be able to witness this month. And so, inshallah, as we continue through this month, we're mindful of those uh, who, we, who, have, who may have been lost along the way, uh, but that they live on in, in our spirits and our dua uh, to, to continue to, to be able to benefit from this month, inshallah, uh, even after meet, returning to their maker. So we keep them in our dua, uh, inshallah, and that this is not a time that goes to waste, uh, especially for us on their behalf. So as we mentioned that, uh, we're in the final stretch of Ramadan. It's the most blessed time of the month and now in the most blessed time of the year, specifically with respect to these last 10 days. Uh, I've talked in the prison setting where I do the Juma, uh, oftentimes in the analogy of this being a mountain climb. And each time I see them, it's every 10 days. Uh, and so now we're going into the final stretch uh, and Alhamdulillah, you know, we're, we're kind of going along this mountain journey, but uh, we've, been, we've been going Quite a ways now this and coming into the last third of Ramadan uh, we kind of climbed this mountain we've probably had some slips and some falls uh, some injuries here some time where we need to pause uh, but just as we've had uh, you know these injuries or these setbacks we've probably also had great strides or stretches of progress uh, and we might have as I mentioned even along the way lost some folks, people who we love, people who we care, but in their memory and in their spirit, we continue to push ourselves to that mountaintop uh, to make it not just about us, but about all of those whom we love and whom we care for as well. So on this part of the journey, this last leg, we can see that mountaintop. Uh, but as we know, when you're climbing up a mountain, sometimes that toughest part, and most of the times that toughest part is going up to the final leg of the summit. Uh, the air gets thinner, the path gets narrower and more jagged, uh, the climb becomes steeper, uh, but the goal remains in sight. It's manifest uh, in, in, in a way. Uh, and so similarly for us, as we enter into the last 10 days, regardless of how we got here or in what state that we think we've shown up in, this is where we make our mark. This is where it counts. And this is our chance, unlike in any other uh, time of the year. So before we embark forward in these last 10 days, inshallah, this last leg of the journey uh, that we're going on, let us just sit with this for a moment that in the last 10 days, um, that not just in the last 10 days, but emotionally, mentally, spiritually, and in accordance with our own hopes, are we at a place where we feel really great? Or are we uh, feeling exactly as we hoped? Do we feel that we're falling short of what our Ramadan could have been, that we're maybe really stumbling and struggling up until this point? Are we not happy with how this Ramadan has been going so far? 
this is the time to be able to ask these questions uh, and not just ask these questions, but to contemplate, to reflect, to remind ourselves and to be able to make those changes and adjusted adjustments needed before uh, we reach the end of this month, before we reach that mountaintop uh, and in the time that they will count the most, inshallah. So to begin with, we have fasting. We've, we've been fasting in this month for those of us who are able to, and we want to first and foremost remind ourselves, why are we fasting? And if we are not able to fast, that still looms over us that if we're not able to fast, we're still doing other things uh, in a sense if we're intending to make up our fasts on different days or we're feeding other people, whatnot, um, that these are also things we should be mindful of. So as a whole, whether we're fasting or not, for whatever reason, we're still cognizant of the fact that Ramadan is, is, is one of those months where we act out in different ways uh, in, with respect to worship, with respect to benefiting uh, ourselves and the world around us because of these fasts. So we remind ourselves, what does the Quran say about fasting? The Quran says fasting is prescribed for you as it was prescribed for those before you so that you might become God conscious, so that you might develop a sense of God consciousness. And uh, it's very fascinating that Rumi st uh, states very beautifully that fasting is that which blinds the body in order to open the eyes of the soul. So thinking about when we are removing the, the nourishment, the physical nourishment, that the spiritual nourishment is what comes in its absence and fills it. So fasting in Arabic is uh, of the word psalm, uh, and this has the root word meaning of self-restraint. So fasting we know is not just about losing physical weight, but losing the weight of our egos, losing that which weighs us down, the attachments and distractions which create blinders and uh, a disconnect and a veil between us and Allah, uh, inhibiting proper connection. And fasting helps to scale this back. Uh, the Quran states in the same verse that lifts up that uh, of, of Ramadan being a time when the Quran was revealed and being a time in which those who are present should fast right after that states that Allah desires ease for you, not hardship. Thinking of that, this practice of fasting um, is, is one that in Ramadan, uh, that, that not without it, Ramadan is intended to be a month of mercy, love, and of ease, not hardship, with fasting. So it's not that without fasting that Ramadan is now a month of ease, but it's with this fasting, with this physical fasting, that Ramadan becomes a month of ease and not one of hardship. And so uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi lifted up though, that, that it's not just about the rituals. It's not just about abstaining from food and just partaking in this as if it is a ritual. It's about something deeper. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam lifted up very sternly and very poignantly that there are people who will fast. There are people who will fast, uh, and, and from that fast, they will get nothing but hunger and thirst. And there are people who will pray, and they'll get nothing that pray, you know, on time, do all their stuff. They will pray, uh, you know, without any flaw, in a sense, and they get nothing from that prayer except a sleepless night and maybe some sore feet and uh, just all the other things that might come when someone is exerting themselves in prayer that they'll get nothing but those, those things which will, will, which will make our bodies feel, uh, feel depleted in a sense. And so the Prophet also lifts up that it's not just about fasting from the food. It's not just about abstaining from what's food. Uh, the Prophet lifts up that whoever does not give up lying, foul speech, or evil actions, Allah is not in any need of them from leaving their food and drink or basically their fasting, that Allah has no need for these things if you are not, if you're not getting what is the true purpose of this, if you are still fasting, but you are still lying, um, but you're still cursing other people, but you're hurting other people, you're doing all these different things, you're backbiting, uh, you're, you're, you're making jokes at other people's expense and hurting them, that you, there's no reason uh, that Allah needs for you to fast uh, because you're, it's not connecting with you. So thinking about when we are fasting, are we also fasting from the negative thoughts that we might be having? Are we fasting from the negative desires? Are we fasting, uh, are, are, are our tongues fasting? Are our minds fasting from that which is negative? Not just, you know, our bodies fasting from that uh, which, which gives us physical sustenance and that which may be negative, but thinking about as well on the spiritual dimension. So 
This fasting, as the Prophet has looked it up, as we have talked about here, it's not one that's just from food, but it's one that's from the world as a whole, from the desires. It, it's done so to cultivate God consciousness because God consciousness is the foundation for receiving and understanding Allah's connection to us and through everything that is around us. So we're able to, when we cultivate that God consciousness, able to see Allah in uh, the works of Allah, uh, not just in our own lives, but in every kind of place that we look in, as well as deep within us. So that that connection is what comes about. And as I mentioned, if we're unable to fast, uh, whether we're unable to even make up a fast uh, because of maybe some condition that, that we have or uh, something else that may be there, that still the reward to be able to feed other people, to help other people is the same reward for fasting. The Prophet lifted up that the one who provides an iftar, that provides the dinner, the food to break uh, one's fast or to hold one's fast has the reward of the one who is fasting. So not to underscore that, that if we're not able to fast, of course, it may you know, feel that we're not getting to do enough or that we may not be able to fully partake in this month. But lifting up the, the aspect of the reward and the spiritual comparison of the two, that they are on the same plane. And so don't just uh, don't 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 feel, you know, uh, don't feel let down that, that we're not able to fast, but see this as an opportunity to be able to help others in different ways because you're still benefiting yourself. So feeding other people, doing what we can, feeding those in need has just exactly the same reward. Uh, and so seeing that uh, in, in the seeing a month of opportunity, regardless of where we might be coming from, whether we're able to physically partake in the fast of uh, the literal fasting uh, or we're not, because even if you are not fasting from the food, you still might be helping people in other ways, but you're still fasting from all these negative things. It's not that just because you're fat, you're not fasting literally that you should, should still in Ramadan partake in having negative thoughts or uh, hurting people or saying bad things or lying or anything like that. You also should be uh, most mindful of that as well, uh, that we're not exempt from that. So as we're at this juncture, we want to ask ourselves again, with 10 days uh, in this final 10 days, this final stretch, we want to ask ourselves, how have our fasts been going? Not just evaluating how hungry we are or how many calories we've lost or how caloric, how our caloric intake is, how much weight we have, uh, but do we feel any changes beyond the physical? What do we feel in our spiritual realm? What do we feel in our spiritual uh, containers now that our physical containers might be depleted? Where, what, how do we relate this to our, our consciousness of God? Do we, how do we evaluate that? Do we feel more conscious of God? Um, do, how do we feel towards other people? Do we feel uh, we're more snappy towards other people or, or more you know, snippy at them? Do we uh, react more? How's our interactions changing, not just with our personal worship and our personal connection to God? How's our, react, how's our interactions changing with the world around us? If fasting is that which makes us close-minded, which makes our hearts close-minded, uh, and makes us more, uh, you know, harsh people judging other people, uh, who are we fasting for? What what are we fasting for? And what what benefit are we deriving from it? So the true fast is is that which we we not only become more aware of Allah, but it helps us become more aware of ourselves and as well as our behaviors in all aspects of our lives. Not just in the worship sense, not just on the prayer mat, not just when eating or not eating, but in all sense. How am I treating other people? Am I watching my tongue? What are my eyes looking at? What am I hearing? How am I standing up to things that are uh, clear injustices? Thinking about all of these things in context. So apart from fasting, uh, inshallah, we'll talk about uh, praying in Laylatul Qadr. Uh, that apart from fasting, we also want to be mindful of our prayers, which are not only enhanced in quality, but in or sorry, in quantity, but also in quality in Ramadan, especially into these last 10 nights as Laylatul Qadr is looming. So we want to ask ourselves, how have our prayers been? Had they been rushed or forced? Are they simple motions and repetitions, moments of connection, genuine time for self-reflection and contemplation? What have they been? If our prayers haven't been what they ha what we have hoped for them to be, and we've still gotten to where we are at this time in Ramadan, uh, now is the time to make them count. And now is the time to get them right. Uh, and if they've been going great, alhamdulillah, now's the time to not only keep that same energy, but to be able to improve as much as we are able to. Uh, there's a hadith that, that, that we, is very famous that states that this month of Ramadan is uh, one in which the first part brings Allah's mercy. The middle part is the one that brings Allah's forgiveness. And the last part, which brings 
freedom of the fire. Uh, these are understood to be the first 10 days, second 10 days, last 10 days. It's actually a weak hadith, um, but the benefit of it is that it shows us that, and as we know, that each of these things is abundant in Ramadan. Each of these things is access accessible for us in Ramadan. Uh, the mercy of Allah is abundant. The forgiveness of Allah is abundant. The freedom from the fire and protection from hellfire is abundant. So especially in these last 10 days, so when we pray, we want to be mindful of these things as well. That What are we praying for exactly? And so, as I mentioned, speaking of the last 10 days, which alhamdulillah, if we're able to be blessed to be able to witness through the uh, the end throughout the uh, the conclusion of them, uh, we we see that this is not only the time of, uh, that counts, but this is the time in which uh, Laylatul Qadr is uh, is is to be set. So, apart from the fact lifted up in the Quran that Laylatul Qadr uh, is a night in which the reward is that of a thousand months or of basically 80 years. That about an average, a uh, little bit little above average, uh, average lifespan, that uh, it's very interesting to note that the mystics lift up that due to such a blessed reward of a worship, a lifetime of worship for a single night of worship, that it's as if, in a sense, you can draw the analogies to, to Hajj and the rewards of Hajj, that since not everybody can afford to go to Hajj or may has the means to go to Hajj, uh, to Mecca, to the pilgrimage to Mecca, that Laylatul Qadr is that in which Allah brings Hajj to your doorstep, to your feet, and makes it accessible right from your home. But you have to also, just like in Hajj, you have to strive for it. You don't know what night it could be, but you are going to strive for it. You have to try to strive for it uh, and try and find it. So uh, if you may not have to get on a flight Take that, you know, uh, take that 14, 15 hour flight uh, over and get into Ihram and do all the, the, the different rites and everything. But you still have to make that effort to get onto that prayer mat, to uh, set that space aside, to get into the zone mentally and to be able to uh, set that time apart in order to uh, access that moment. But uh, as I mentioned, we won't know unless we, we show up and show out for this. So knowing that Allah is bringing this to our doorstep. How are we going to react um, or how, what are we going to do to make the most of it, inshallah? So as we lifted up that, this is the most important time in the year and the most important night in the year because we are invited by Allah to be able to interact with and have a hand with shaping our destiny, Laylatul Qadr, the night of decree, the night of destiny, the night of power. And this is not this is done not just through prayer, but it's done through service to humanity. It's done through protecting the environment, feeding and clothing those who are impoverished and seeking forgiveness for our past sins, recognizing what have we done up to this point and who will we be going forward. So really a substantive night, a substantive time. And that's why you don't have it on one specific night in the sense that we know that this is a night and we're all gonna cash in here that we keep that same energy for 10 days, thinking that one of these nights will be the night, but in the same breath, we are going to be doing as much as we can uh, so that we can benefit not just ourselves, but other people. And we, we cultivate that change within us. And so we want to ask ourselves that regardless of what the previous 20 days have looked like for us, what will our let not last 10 be and look like? How will this part of our journey in, in inevitably define the climb itself? That when we get to the mountaintop, this is how we uh, had gotten there. And then just to reflect on that, what was, did we did we drag ourselves up? Or are we able to do it with such a confidence that we're able to stand at that mountaintop and feel proud uh, of that moment and feel, uh, feel that connection, that consciousness of Allah? So in conclusion, we want to remind ourselves of Ramadan's purpose, that Ramadan's purpose is not just caloric loss and abstention from food or that which just nourishes us uh, in, in a physical sense or to simply maximize our rituals and our spiritual stat sheets and to just simply you know do, do all the most uh, just for the sake of doing it. Uh, but Ramadan's purpose is to help us break our old patterns, not just short-term behaviors or behavior and, and behavioral modification, but it is essentially, um, as an author put it, that uh, a dawn that leads to the creation of a new day uh, in all senses of the word, spiritually, physically, mentally, emotionally, socially, we become new and renewed people. We don't become completely different people. Uh, in a sense, we become the people who entered Ramadan, but improved uh, understanding where we were and now knowing how far we've come and where we can go. Uh, and it's to help us learn not just about who we are, but to become aware of who we are, to become aware of Allah 
and to learn self-restraint. It's a month of forgiveness, mercy, restraint, and guidance, not just for our physical bodies, but for our minds, for our minds when they're in, in anxiety, for our minds who might be depressed, for our hearts that might be broken, for all of us who partake. Uh, and it's a time where we might fast from literal food, uh, but it's a time that we additionally fast from all of that, which puts a distance between us and Allah as a reminder to be present in all things with Allah. And so we don't just go through Ramadan shedding all that we had come in with and becoming completely different people that were that we don't even recognize who started the journey, but we build off of what we learned. We see what we did well and improve. We see what we uh, may have done uh, in, in another sense and do it better. Uh, and we may see things that we did wrong and be able to improve those uh, and correct those in a way. And that at the end of the day, for no other reason or purpose did we enter this month and we go through this month, but to try to become not just more closer to Allah, but become more aware of Allah in all of the uh, aspects of our life. So while in Ramadan, though we may not realize it, we do more of what we were created to do. What we were created to do is to worship Allah holistically to by not just being on the prayer mat 24 seven, but uh, or not just fasting, um, you know, with the intention of just, you know, just just fasting for the ritual of it, but we're doing what we we're created to do to worship Allah. And that worship is through feeding the hungry, serving the poor, restraining our egos, restraining our tongues, restraining our minds from that which is harmful, from that which is negative, to reflect Allah's qualities as we've been covering the divine attributes, uh, not just in ourselves, but in the world around us, and to be in community with one another, to be uh, together with other people in this experience. And so we want to ask them at this juncture, in the final leg of our journey and our climb up this mountain, in these last 10 days, have we become more God conscious? And if not, how can we be? What, how do we make this time count? So inshallah, uh, in closing, we ask Allah to make our fasting, to make our prayers, to make our deeds, to make our Ramadan journey as a whole, regardless of where we are, who we are, where we're coming from, to make it a means of purification, to make it a means of reflection, to make it a means of connection, and to make it a means of correction and redemption. And to remind us as uh, remind us all that this is for Allah, for no one else but Allah. Uh, and as Allah teaches us in the Quran, we say, indeed, my prayer, my rites of sacrifice, my living and my dying are for Allah, Lord of the worlds. And we ask Allah to allow us to not just witness these final 10 days, but to make the most of them to their fullest. And to be able to not just witness, but to experience and benefit from Laylatul Qadr, inshallah, ameen, and to allow those who are not able to witness, who return to Allah this month, to benefit from our services and journeys in this month, inshallah, uh, and to keep their memory alive throughout, inshallah, and to continue to allow our worship and our, our services to benefit them uh, in the hereafter and to benefit us. Allahumma inna ka'fuun tuhib karimun tuhibbu tuhibbul afwa fafuanna. Allahumma inna ka'fuun karimun tuhibbul afafu fafuanni. Allah, we ask you that you are the best forgiver. You love forgiveness and we ask forgiveness for ourselves. And as our father Ibrahim alayhi salam said when raising the first Kaaba with his son, uh, that we close our prayer and we raise our efforts for this last 10 days, that Rabbana taqabbal minna. Rabbana taqabbal minna innaka anta samil alim that our Lord accept the service from us, accept the service from us, for thou art the hearing, all hearing and all knowing. Rabbana waj'alna muslimaini laka wa min dhurriyatina ummatan muslimatan laka wa arina mana sikana wa arina mana sikana wa tuba alayna innaka anta tawabur rahim. Our Lord, make us Muslims and those who submit to you and from our descendants, a nation that submits and that is Muslim to you and show us our rights of worship and accept our repentance. Indeed, you are the accepting of repentance, the most merciful. Rabbi ja'alni muqimu salati min duriyati. Rabbana wa taqabbal dua, my Lord, make me an establisher of prayer and many from my descendants establishers of prayer and our lord accept this dua accept this supplication our lord forgive me and forgive our parents and the believers on the day that the account is established and on the day of judgment
inshallah, ameen. Juma Mubarak uh, to you all uh, and blessed 10 days to eat the two, uh, the final 10 days to everyone. Uh, may Allah uh, accept your prayers. May Allah accept your efforts and may Allah accept your striving. And may Allah allow us all to inshallah experience, witness and see and benefit from Laylatul Qadr, not just in this month, but inshallah for all the months and the rest of our lives to come. Inshallah, ameen. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.